Hi everyone, it is September 21, 2018. The move towards a cashless society continues on and it looks like it's coming sooner than later. So Wells Fargo plans to cut up to 10% of their workforce in the next three years. The bank cited changing customer preferences, including the adoption of digital self-service capabilities. And we're getting more and more articles that are about countries, their population, the percentage of their population going digital. So the U.S. digital now makes up 51 percent of the United States ad spending and uh, Canada is the lead country in terms of people using digital money rather than actual cash and these are the countries leading in the world in cash transactions where is the graph here or the chart Canada Canada has 57% of their transactions. They're digital, cashless. Next on the list are Sweden, the United Kingdom, then France, then the United States and China. Not far behind when it comes to cashless payments. And they are manipulating people to go cashless, and I'll get to that in one second. What is Money 2020? Wow. Well, it is, it is an awful lot of countries putting together these talks, bringing together people to talk about the future of money. And do you want to know? who some of these people are? Well, in Las Vegas, the speakers will be, and the Las Vegas uh, conference is coming up very quickly, I think, is it October 2018? Yep. October 21 through the 24th of this year. Who's going to be attending? People representing Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, Citigroup, uh, Virgin Group, Sir Richard Branson, Google, Amazon, PayPal, Amex, MasterCard, Visa, Wells Fargo, HSBC, USA, MoneyGram, Morgan Stanley, U.S. Department of Treasury, Mayor of Dallas, Greater Phoenix Economic Council, the Linux, Linux uh, Foundation, tech companies, digital ID, and um, Authentication Council of Canada, Financial Conduct Authority, that's in the UK, Anheuser-Busch, Harvard Business School, Bank of America, Bain Venture Capital, Discover, Western Union, IBM, Reuters, WhatsApp, House of Lords, uh, somebody from the House of Lords, Forbes, Fortune, Airbnb, Lloyd's Banking Group, U.S. Uh, representative of the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, the a uh, guy from the Fifth District State of New York, Gregory Meeks, Best Buy. The California Department of Corporation, uh, the Commissioner, Jan Owen. Wow, there's an awful lot of people. Uh, representative from the United States Federal Trade Commission, Blockchain, ICBC, Argentina, Barclays Bank, Deutsche Bank, Bloomberg, Business Insider, U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And Operation Hope, and that's not all of them. My God, woof! They are bringing together speaker after speaker after speaker after speaker. Wow, yeah, well, 
This is the move towards making it happen. All of these people involved in bringing the world united in going digital, getting rid of cash. And it's a, it's a whole lot of people. I'm trying to scroll down all the way to the bottom. Oh, my God, there's going to be a lot of people talking in Las Vegas. How could you possibly listen to all these people? Oh, well, they're going to get the job done, guys. Now, I want to read some of this article because it's really important. The cashless society is a con and big finance is behind it. Banks are closing ATMs and branches in an attempt to nudge users toward digital services. And it's all for their own benefit, not yours. Oh, but people love convenience, don't they? They love their smartphone, do all their banking on that smartphone. Well, when the world becomes cashless, you'll see how the world, the world's people, will be so easily controlled. Um, all over the Western world, banks are shutting down cash machines and branches. They are trying to push you into using their digital payments and digital banking infrastructure, just like Google wants everyone to access and navigate the broader internet via its privately controlled search, search, uh, search portal. So financial institutions want everyone to access and navigate the broader economy through their systems to cut costs. Branches require staff. People using tellers is costly to banks now. In closing down their branches or withdrawing their cash machines, they make it harder for everybody to use those services. I am much more likely to choose a digital option if the banks deliberately make it harder for me to choose a non-digital option. That's why they're closing down ATMs. That's why they're closing down branches because it nudges people towards the digital way of banking uh, paying bills, everything. Um, why do you think they have those self-checkouts in supermarkets? And I've been noticing that supermarkets that have those um, self-checkouts, they have more self-checkout lanes than they do actual cashiers at registers. So you get long lines where there is a cashier. And what are you apt to do? You're apt to go over to that self-checkout. And <clears throat> while you can still, I believe, use cash at those self-checkouts, um, can you? Maybe you can't. I don't know. But it's just a manipulation. They shut down the lanes where there are cashiers, create long lines, and then people will begin to use uh, the lanes where there are no people. Get, 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 get that we are going full robotic. Uh, robots will be taking over, God, how many, I think like 57% of human jobs by like 2020. No joke. Now I might have been off with those numbers, but not greatly. Um, and this guy talks about the self checkout tools at supermarkets. You know, replace checkout staff with self service machines, you cut costs, and it's a more convenient alternative. So people begin to use them more and more. But as people are using that more and more, they're helping to you know, manifest a society 
where more and more people will be without jobs. This is interesting. Marxist philosopher Antonio Gramsci, uh, his concept, concept of hegemony referred to the way in which powerful parties condition the cultural and economic environment in such a way that their interests begin to be perceived as natural and inevitable by the general public. Nobody was on the street shouting for digital payment 20 years ago, but increasingly it seems obvious and natural that it should take over. And Louis Althusser, I'm not sure if I pronounced that name right, but how about interpolation? Interpolation? Yes. I think I pronounced that right. The basic idea is that you get people to internalize beliefs by addressing them as if they already had those beliefs. 20 years ago, nobody believed that cash was inconvenient. But every time I walk into London Underground, that's the subway in London, I see adverts that address me as if I was a person who finds cash inconvenient. The objective is to reverse engineer a belief within me that it is inconvenient and that cashlessness is in my interests. But a cashless society is not in your interests for many reasons. But haven't you been uh, you know, on a line in a store and you're behind somebody who is counting change to pay the cashier. They're using, you know, cash and then they're counting, you know, pennies or dimes or whatever. And have you noticed that people get really impatient with that? I asked a cashier at a store and I thought, I thought she was like 18. Turned out she was 26. But I said, do you, or I asked, do you get frustrated when people use cash? Because it involves a little bit more time in terms of they having to count out, you know, the money and the pennies and the quarters. And she said, yes. She said, sometimes I really do. Um, but she was somebody who was rather smart and recognized that it was only because she has been you know, um, she's young and she was brought up in an era in which all of her friends, you know, they don't even regard, they don't even think about cash. They pay with their smartphones. Um, so cash to them is becoming like this obsolete idea already. And it's unfortunate because there's an awful lot of problems with cash. So recently there was visa chaos during which millions of people who had become dependent on digital payment suddenly found themselves stranded when the monopolistic uh, payment network crashed and was temporarily temporarily set back. Digital systems may be convenient, but they often come with central points of failure. Cash, on the other hand, does not crash, uh, is not subject to remote control or remote monitoring. The cash system allows for an unmonitored, off-the-grid space. This is also the reason why financial institutions, financial technology companies, and governments and well they want to get rid of it cash transactions are outside the net that such ends institutions cast to harvest fees and data cashless society brings dangers people without bank accounts will find themselves further marginalized disenfranchised from the cash infrastructure that previously supported them there are also poorly understood psychological implications about cash 
encouraging self-control, while paying by card or a mobile phone can encourage spending. And a cashless society has major surveillance implications. But eventually, these credit cards, they're going to be X'd out. You will only be able to buy what you can afford with cards. That's my hunch. You know, the debt society worked for them fabulously for a very long time, but I think they're getting ready. No, I know they're getting ready to change the entire way of operating. So the UK government has chosen to champion the digital financial service industry. Um, and so is the United Nations on it. Here we have United Nations SCAP 7, the Asia and the Pacific. Well, let's push Asia and the Pacific into a digital society. And why are they doing that? Well, it's to help the poor, really. But wow, there's a connection with 2030 Agenda. Isn't it amazing that we still can't get through to people that, that when we bring up Agenda 2030, there are still people who just roll their eyes and believe it's all a conspiracy theory. And all they have to do is go to the United Nations website to see that the United Nations has been working diligently for decades to transform the world in accordance with their Agenda 2030 dictates. Um, but yeah, you know, Agenda 2030 is the agenda that will have full control over everything, every aspect of your life. Well, of course, the uh, transforming our cash societies into cashless societies, it has to go along with that. Here, Internet Broadband for an Inclusive Digital Society, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Okay, we had Obama campaigning on getting broadband out to everyone. You know, those in the rural communities, they had, he, he was, you know, going to be subsidizing uh, getting broadband to reach all of the people that didn't have it. Why? Do you really think he cares about people in the rural areas? Of course not. But it goes along with, well, if we're going to be transforming from a cash to a cashless society, everybody's got to be connected electronically. We've got Trump pushing for broadband in rural areas. Why? Because everybody has to be connected. And... Uh, you, 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 there's no way to transform societies from cash to cashless if a lot of people have no connectivity. Innovation for Smarter Digital Development, United Nations. They're right there with the transformation of all societies going digital. UNESCO, ah, the United Nations uh, education of our young, a journey through digital society. A journey through digital society shows how to tap into that fantastic potential to help women and men, the world's citizens, in their daily lives and in response to societal issues. It's not about helping the poor. It's not about helping women or men. But that's the way they sell it. And that's the way Bill Gates has been selling it and the United Nations. 
They favor cashless technology for the poor. Uh, big banks are getting ready for this uncertain future. Money 2020. And they even have online ways to manipulate people to go digital. Isn't that great? How to coax customers to switch from person-to-person -person service channels to less expensive digital options. How to move customers, especially less profitable ones, from more expensive person-to-person -person service channels to less expensive digital ones. And here, this is a paper that is uh, telling banks how they can manipulate their customers. Three points are used uh, or are uh, detailed in this paper and understand, yeah, it is far more difficult to move existing customers away from expensive channels after their preferences have been established. It is much more effective to help them choose the optimum channel at the start of the relationship. But if you have to move those existing customers, one way is to offer positive or negative incentives. Encourage customers to engage in a desired behavior, such as moving their activity to digital transaction channels. Um, you can use negative incentives or disincentives to discourage an undesirable behavior, such as using more expensive channels to transact their banking business. Some banks have tried a disincentive strategy, such as adding a teller use fee or charging for calls to a call center. But it is better to uh, use disincentives, or I'm sorry, it's better to use these uh, positive incentives to reward desired behaviors. Kind of like how you train a dog. Imposing charges and restrictions to move customers to digital channels that they don't prefer in contrast is unlikely to yield positive results. Our analysis showed that half of all customers will look for another bank if fees are imposed or interest rates are increased on loans. Fees imposed for using tellers. Um, more than one-third of customers will look for another bank if their bank imposes procedural restrictions, for example, shortening operating hours for branches or call centers. And I have no doubt that a lot of you have already experienced this kind of manipulation. Um, you can set positive defaults. In general, people are more likely to engage in desired behaviors when they must opt out of a particular course of action than when they have to opt in. Employers often use this method to encourage workers to participate in 401k programs. They automatically sign up new employees for a 401k contribution and many employees continue to contribute rather than making the effort to cancel enrollment. Providing, providing incentives or rewards for customers who continue to use the bank's desired channel. Banks could provide a pricing menu similar to that used in the wireless industry. This menu could offer different pricing for a range of channel use options from pay-as-you-go plans that include unlimited digital transactions, a limited number of teller transactions, and a limited number of call center calls per month to unlimited access to all channels, anytime, anyhow, anywhere. And you'll pay for each particular service. And providing people, this is what they do at self-checkouts. 
I've noticed Walmart has a person standing at the self checkout. They're there to provide help for anybody who needs it. And um, airlines put up kiosks for greater efficiency, lower costs, and better allocation of live agents' time. And once they begun to do that, once they began to do that, I'm sorry, um, by 2004, more than 70% of passengers were checking in using these kiosks as long as there was someone there that could teach them how to use the kiosk initially. And then they continued to go right on back to the kiosk. So unfortunately, we are all part of the manifestation of this new world order. And uh, you have to opt out, <laughs> opt out of this kind of behavior. You know, once we go cashless, you're going to see remarkable control over every financial tra transaction. Um, and look, the world is turning into just this tyranny on steroids. China, you know, they have their social credit score. And if you don't register a certain number on the social credit score, well, what happens? You can't fly. Um, you can't get loans and other punitive steps that China is taking. So when we go cashless, that kind of stuff is going to be happening all over the world. But the government and the uh, financial institutions will have all, every transaction that you take will be recorded and stored. Is that, you, you will have absolutely no privacy whatsoever. Is that really the kind of world that we want to be moving into? Because we are moving into it quickly. And when you see articles like Wells Fargo beginning to cut 10% of their workforce, why? Well, they're now coming out saying, because we're going digital. Digital. You know that it's coming soon. So just wanted to give you this information. And you decide how you want the world to go. You can either you know, keep using cash or stop using cash and use your smartphones. We had an ATM change here. It was Bank of America. And I'm in Anderson, South Carolina. And I can't use that ATM anymore because every time I, I tried twice, they changed the whole ATM machine and it does something with smartphones. But it does have a card slot. And when I put my card in, it just spits it out and says <laughs> something like, we don't know what to do with this. It doesn't say that, but I can't remember exactly what it says. So in other words, I have to have a smartphone to use that ATM. Well, I don't have a smartphone. I have no intentions of getting a smartphone, uh, and I sure wish that more and more people would ditch their smartphone because it seems that the smartphone is going to be perhaps the number one payment method in our digital society. Anyway, guys, have a good weekend. All links are below.